Hello everyone, guess what? I just hit another meaningless base 10 milestone. Yes, I now have 2,000 subscribers! <laughs> but I don't want to do one of those boring, meaningless, self-serving videos. I want to do something like I did last time, something that, that talks about something and, and important, you know, a, a good thing to, to discuss, a thing that maybe a lot of people have been talking about in the comments. Something like... Oh, hold on a second. I'll just put it on speaker. Hello? Hello, Shane. Oh, hi, Steven. I need your help again. I'm really stumped with something. Yes, what is it this time? He's such I a I really pest. want to stick it hard to these stupid creationists. They're going on about Piltdown Man. Yeah, they do that. I need you to help me get the facts straight so that I can really pwn their asses. No problem. Piltdown Man refers to a fossil that was supposedly the missing link between apes and humans. It turned out to be a hoax. It showed up in 1912 from a lawyer named Charles Dawson. It's unknown if Dawson himself was the perpetrator of the hoax. There are a number of different suspects, but he's the most likely one. Uh, he was completely unable to document where the fossil came from. He claimed uh, that it came from a gravel pit, and the workers, according to him, were digging around the gravel pit, and they found these bones, and they had broken them up, but they had given to him, uh, and then he gave them to Arthur Smith Woodward at the Geological Department at the British Museum. And so he reconstructed what he thought Piltdown Man would have looked like based on these fossils. But when they showed it to the scientists, it was under glass so they couldn't examine it properly. Well, remember that they thought this was the only available specimen of a missing link. It was too precious to risk further damage. But nonetheless, they were very excited about the find. You know why? Because it meant that mankind had originated in the United Kingdom, and it really spoke to their nationalistic fervor. Yeah, you Brits are like that. We have better table manners, too. Hey, don't make me dump some tea into the harbor. Oh, all right. Anyway, about three years later, two different scientists looked at the fossil and immediately said that the jaw was from a modern ape. Of course, one of them was American. Even a blind squirrel finds a nut. And the other was French? Oh, you had to bring that up. Then, in 1923, a German anthropologist looked at the fossil and said that, yes, the jaw is from an ape, and the cranium is from a modern human. The moral of the story is, don't trust the British! Hey, at least we know how to pronounce words correctly. Oh yeah? So where's the F in Lieutenant? Built down man had conformed to the See predictions of scientists who had thought that the human brain had grown before the jaw started receiving back. It makes sense that a successful hoax is going to conform to what scientists predict, and not necessarily the way things are. Of course, that prediction had to be revised with the discovery of other hominins. They'd already known about Java Man. Also known as Homo erectus. Don't let McCain hear you say that. And of course, Darwin knew all about Neanderthals. But the further discovery of Australopithecus africanus showed that, contrary to what they had thought, the human jaw receded as the cranium started growing, not afterwards. Piltdown Man was making less and less sense, and more and more scientists were declaring it to be a phony. The American Museum of Natural History displayed it as a mixture of ape and human bones. Which isn't what the creationists say. They say the scientists were deliberately hoaxing this to convince people that evolution is true. Well, they lie. Yeah, they do that. As a result, the Piltdown Man bones weren't even displayed for decades. Then, in 1953, the British Museum finally let the scientists examine the fossil. They had a new test called fluorine dating, and they tried on it because they wanted to verify how old it was. And the way fluorine dating works is you have to drill into the fossil because you have to get to where everything is that hasn't been contaminated from the outside, and then you test it for fluorine levels. So they start drilling into the fossil, and then they start saying, do you smell that? That, that smells kind of like burning flesh. Something organic is burning. 
There's nothing organic in the fossil. It, it couldn't be the fossil, but it smells like burning flesh. Well, you'd think they would have noticed if they'd been set on fire. One would think. So, they looked inside the part of the fossil where they drilled. What they found is that the inside of the fossil was a light gray color, just like bone, and not a darker color like the outside of the fossil. But a fossil should be the same color all the way through, since it's the minerals that replace the bone that give the fossil its color. So that meant that this was not a fossil at all, but a bone that had been stained to look like one. So they did the fluorine test, and they found out that the bones were hundreds of years old, not millions or even thousands. They also examined it under magnification, and they found out that the teeth were chimpanzee teeth that had just been filed down to look like human teeth. They could see the file marks. Now, if they had been allowed to get their hands on this fossil in 1912, they could have found this out in 10 minutes, even without the fluorine test. So, you really couldn't say that the scientists were fooled by anything because they weren't even able to examine it properly. And then there's those other scientists I mentioned who were skeptical of it all along. You know, the ones who weren't British? You were just jealous because we have better colleges than you. Oh, really? So who made your voice box? That's an American accent. Why? I like it. I think it makes me sound like George Hearn. Anyway, that's your answer for the creationists. Scientists weren't allowed to examine the fossil until 1953. Many were suspicious the whole time, and their numbers grew. In the end, the hoax was exposed, not by creationists, but by scientists. Evolutionary scientists! And some creationists say that it was Darwin himself who made the hoax. Which is ridiculous, because Darwin died in 1882. This fossil didn't show up until 30 years later. I think that's a basic math fail. And yet they still, to this day, cite Piltdown Man and a very few others as proof that there's no evidence for evolution. Ignoring, of course, the plethora of transitional fossils we have that are not hoaxes. In other words, they're lying about the evidence. Yeah, they, they do, do that. that. So, does that set you straight? Yes, this is enough to show anyone that the creationists are just wrong about Piltdown Man. Anyone not convinced by all of this is just hopelessly deluded. That's how it goes. Well, I gotta run. They want me to go give some boring lecture on super strings. Okay, Steve, you take care. Thanks, Shane. Are we still on for Friday night? Train spotting again? No thank you. You're lost, dude. See ya, Hawk. Bye, Shane.